All right. So in this lecture, we will discuss about the RMS values or it can also be called as effective values. So prior to this, so let me show that what we had seen in the last session is that a review of the last session. So we have discussed about the important parameter that is evaluation of average value, average values for different kind of AC waveforms and how we evaluate the average value. So mathematically we can write any function average f of f average is equal to if we identify the time period then divide with the time period and integrate the function over that interval of time so that what it gives the average value and this can also be stated little in another way that integral of a function gives the area under the function so it can be written as area under f of t divided by the time period so either of the principle you can utilize it basically both are same but what we are doing is that this integration we are trying to interpret as area under the f of t okay and we stated one more important thing that if we have dc voltage as like this then we can say at any instant of time how much will be the voltage available as like one second two seconds five seconds we have always 10 volts magnitude it represents that if we connect this kind of voltage to a circuit then this can transform the charge from this battery to the circuit some q amount of the charge may be transferred now but if we take any periodic waveform or ac waveforms as because amplitude is changing we cannot say that always q amount of the charge is pumped into the circuit sometimes charge may pump from circuit to the source when this goes to the negative so like that what we would like to see is that effectively how much is the charge pumped to the circuit from this source when that value is equal to here also that effective how much effectively how much is this source supplying charge to the circuit so by subtracting this return amount then when these two are equal we can say that corresponding thing something like average so that is one concept we stated that over a certain time period how much is the effect of ac in comparison with the dc this is the major important statement to come up with the two important parameters one is average value one more is rms value <coughs> so let us discuss today about the rms value it can also be called as effective value rms value or effective value now according to this statement that i want to see over a certain period of time over a certain period of time what will be the effect of the ac in comparison with the dc so i'll be taking the effect of ac and that effect i will compare with the dc these are three tasks we would like to do for the rms values also but instead of taking as like here voltage i will take now for easy uh, for easy uh, easiness of the derivation so i am taking the current as the value here what i'll do is that so for example let me take like this if i have certain waveform something like this which is a random something like random like this let us consider and this is one time interval 0 to t and beyond this again the same copy may be repeated this copy this copy may be repeated so if somebody want you can just 
copy and paste beside it the same waveform going to be repeated that's what we said as periodic waveform okay so we are not interested all rest of the time periods but just we are interested only in this one interval now i want to see how much will be this waveform rms value so this function i told you it can be voltage or current but more specifically here for the de derivation i am using the current instead of voltage now first let me give you the idea of the rms value then i will go to this de derivation okay so first what i'll do is that let me consider one dc source as like this and this dc source is connected with a switch uh, right so with a switch s1 and this is vdc which may produce a current of idc which may produce a current of idc now this will be connected to some bulb bulb as like this so it is connected to a bulb now what i'll do is that just usually see here carefully observe the things i want to see what will be the effect 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 means i told you previously it is also called as response or it can also be called as output what is the effect of this dc voltage source for this lamp this is a lamp for this lamp for for t time period t interval time interval time interval what does it mean that means here as like this i have a dc voltage source whose voltage is constant how long for a time period of 0 to t how much is the voltage vdc as a result some current is flowing how much is the current idc so you can make here on the same graph current also no issue so current may be some lesser value little lesser value idc or it may be more value also no issue so this is voltage and current axis both this is time axis now try to see that if i will close the switch s1 if s1 is closed closed for for t time period for t time interval time interval now tell me how much will be the heating produced in this lamp generally let me write that heating heating is one effect let me write heating effect due to whom due to voltage source which voltage source dc voltage source so how much is this heating effect let me write in this heating effect let me put as inside the bracket due to dc is equal to how much is the current passing through the bulb idc square into what will be the resistance of this lamp some resistance let us say r how much duration we are allowing this to happen is t interval so into t generally heating effect is equivalent to energy energy is power into time see power is i square r so into t is what the energy clear so heating effect is indirectly it is the energy absorbed by this lamp for a time interval of t this is with respect to dc now what i will do is that just i will try to make one more circuit in extension to this i will connect 
one more switch here S2 then here I will connect a alternating source as like this and whose source nature that current flowing through this is equal to this current see here this current whatever current I had written here so let us say this is VAC AC voltage source is producing a current of I now see that if this current is flowing so now let me write down in this way as like this now S1 is put off S1 is off and S2 is on how long for for next t intervals next time period same time interval or let me say for t interval previously what I did usually when S1 is on S2 is off when S1 is on only DC source is connected to the lamp and I checked how much is the energy absorbed by the lamp next what I am doing is that I am putting S1 to be off I am closing the S2 then I will see for same time interval how much is the energy absorbed by this lamp for time t t period for time period t so when S1 is off and S2 is on for same time interval t period what I would like to see is that let me bring this current waveform here this current waveform here so what is the current waveform now or voltage waveform you can say is that this is the current waveform this current is passing through a resistance of R why because you see S1 is off. Now only this current is flowing through this lamp whose resistance is R. But for that what I will do is that now I cannot say the current is some high amperes as like in the case of DC. So at any instant of time in case of DC it is IDC current. But as of now it is not IDC it is continuously changing. What shall I do? What I will do is that I will try to divide this entire time interval t into some equal number of instants n equal number of instants as like this. Then just let me write that statement also divide divide t interval interval into into n n equal equal steps or sizes equal uh, sizes so what does it represents is that this is one block in this block you can assume that almost current is the some value whose value is equal to some current i1 or i2 etc and for the next block some current for next block some more current like that so now what I'll do is that for first interval let us say current is I1 let me write that so this is uh, what shall I do is that let me say n equal sizes steps then the first interval is first interval first interval or first interval size is equal to so total time period is a t and the first interval I can say uh, or t by n all intervals size is a t by n why because we divided that into equal sizes so every interval size is a t by n okay so let me write this instead of first interval every every uh, interval every uh, what shall I do is that okay every interval 
is equally divided whose size is equal to t by n whose size is equal to t by n now and its corresponding currents let me write here so this is i2 second interval current is i2 third interval current is i2 i3 like that you write it so let me write first corresponding interval first interval current current is i1 is i1 then uh, can you tell me how much is its corresponding uh, heating effect h1 how much is that value current square sorry i1 square into resistance is power how much is the duration of this time interval t by n what i am trying to write is that for each splitted interval i know the time i know how much is its corresponding current then once these things are known i can write directly this is i1 so current square into r is the power into time is the heat similarly for second interval current is i2 if i know current i2 now i can find its corresponding heating effect i2 square into r into t by n why because it is every interval is divided into this size t by n size <coughs> so like this you can make nth interval nth interval current is i n so how much is its corresponding heating effect h n is equal to i n square r t by n exactly so now just try to observe when it was dc i directly wrote that current is simply idc square into r into t as because at any instant of time it doesn't matter current is idc and the total time interval is t as because here in case of ac i don't know that the current is not constant so i split it into small size of the interval this entire time period which is t by n for each that small every small interval i try to find how much is current if those currents are i1 i2 i3 and so on i n then i can say that each component is contributing this amount of the heating effect now generally generally so if we add up all these heating effect we get the heating effect caused by this ac waveform which is equal to h1 plus h2 plus and so on hn which it gives the total ac waveform heating effect produced over a time interval of t period now let me calculate first then i will come back to that conclusion so can i say r into t by n is constant in every h1 h2 h i and so on hn so i'll take that to be common r into t by n okay so next next what i'll get is i1 square plus i2 square plus i and so on i n square what is this heating effect due to ac waveform now let us come to the definition of rms value what rms value states is that love you write down this statement it is let me write completely this is very important it is the dc or steady state value or let me write it is uh, it is the steady state value steady state value value at which at which at which the heating effect the heating effect the heating effect 
heating effect produced 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 by by ac and ac and dc system dc system or produced at which the heating effect produced by ac and dc system ac and dc system at uh, or, or for 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 the for the same circuit for the same circuit for the same circuit and and for for same amount of time period for same amount of for same amount of for the same amount of time period period for the it is the steady state value at which the heating effect produced by this ac and dc system for the same circuit and for the same amount of time period is equal is equal is equal the heating effect produced by ac and dc system is equal for what for same circuit and for same amount of the time period okay so now just try to see that let me say that let me introduce one more point also that steady state means this one steady steady state steady state at steady state at steady state idc is equal to irms idc is equal to irms if this condition to be true as a result of this then heating produced in the dc system must be equal to heating produced in the ac system now if we substitute this conditions that hdc is idc square into r into capital t is equal to so r into t by n i1 square plus i2 square plus i2 square plus so on i1 square now we stated that at steady state this dc value is equal to rms value it is the steady state value steady state value means dc value at which when this condition satisfies this dc value itself is called the rms value when dc effect heating effect is equal to ac heating effect the dc corresponding current is directly called as a rms value so now what shall i do is that just i will substitute in place of idc as i rms square r into t will get cancelled so what is left out is the remaining thing so 1 by n into i1 square plus i2 square plus and so on i n square how i got this expression since idc is equal to i rms now further simplify this mathematically we get i rms is equal to square root of 1 by n into i1 square plus i2 square plus and so on i n square this is one of the important expression which gives many conclusions for the ac systems now see that how this rms has come into picture so if you will consider these quantities what are they as like this i1 square one term i2 square second term and so on i n square don't think of that this is a square just instead of that simply think some this is some x1 x2 and so on xn x1 plus x2 plus and so on xn divided by n what kind of value is that 
if you have this kind of thing x1 plus x2 plus xn what is this value sum of the quantities divided by number of quantities is it a average value yes sir yes so that means average we can also name with some other thing as mean mean refers to the average value mean means average value remember that avg now see that it is mean of what values so squared values see mean square mean square mean means average but which mean squared values mean got my point that is one thing then apart from that what else is there root also there so that's why root mean square okay so so it is just square root of it but what kind of values is this so squared values mean squared values mean it's not like that simply current mean it is current squared and then mean of those values then root of that that is what the rms root mean square values so this is one of the important conclusion right so now just i would like to bring up this into a generalized form that rms values in general in general in general irms is equal to it can be written in this way square root of square root of just i completed only root what else i need mean square mean means average value how do we find the average value by integration so let me take integration so divide with the time period so 1 by t integral over 0 to t so f of t dt but integral over 0 to t f of t dt means it is average value of f of t now if i will take f of t square what i will get is that squared mean squared mean which is mean square okay mean of the squared function that is the meaning so rms values are evaluated in general with this kind of mathematical formulation so now you can see quickly some of the things what we had seen in the last session that about the average values evaluation so we can work on the problems in the same way as what we did for the average values to evaluate the rms values